popular culture today is pretty much divided in how they view teachers. Now, back in my early days, it was looked at as a female occupation. You were only kind of half a man if you were a teacher. Real men aren't school teachers. That's pretty much changed now. But in our culture today, there's still two radically different viewpoints of teachers. One of them still has the concept that teachers are losers, can't really make it in other fields, so they, as a last resort, become teachers. That group is balanced by a group that thinks and makes statements to the effect that teachers are the salvation of our youth today and the shapers of a glorious future. They could do no wrong. Well, kind of interesting. The people that want to look at the positive side of the teaching profession, they go on and on about the fact that good teachers make great people out of students. They go to great extremes to teach every child, motivate every child, understand every child. And there are such teachers, many, many, many of them. The other point of view says, ah, they're losers. They hide behind the tenure law. They don't care. They just put in time. The trouble with the schools is that we need better teachers, better educated, better qualified teachers. Well, you know, there's some truth to both aspects, the negative side that says all that, and the positive side that says all that good stuff. But one thing for sure at heart, we had a group, that might have been one or two that somebody would question, but as a group, we had really dedicated, caring staff that knew every child, you know, small school. Even though Mrs. Elmore had first or second grade, she knew each student and knew each student well, and she would meet the needs to the best of her ability, and she had a lot of ability with everyone. The same with Mrs. Dillon in and, and the third and fourth, and Miss Rose with fifth and sixth, and Mr. Herndon with the uh, seventh and eighth. Good, good teachers. So, getting into the school year a little bit, when a couple of them came to me and said, you know, one of the high school girls, one of the upperclassmen, is really sad, depressed at times. And we try to cheer her up, but well, why don't you talk with her a little bit? They gave me no details, no heads up at all as to what was what. But, you know, I wanted to do all I could, so I started observing the young lady, and then uh, I started making it a point to speak to her and get her to where she'd speak to me so that we had a little acquaintance. And then I found an opportunity to, as quietly as possible, get her aside and say, you know, some of the teachers, and I, particularly the lady teachers were talking to me about her, are, are worried about you. They say that sometimes you're really sad. She didn't say anything. But, you know, she didn't really say anything, and yet there was some dialogue back and forth, and I think she was sizing me up. This is how much she wanted to trust me, and finally she said, well, I, you know, all those teachers know, in fact, almost everybody in this community knows, but you, I had a baby, and the baby was taken away from me. And she said, I didn't really have much to say about it, and from things she said, apparently the father of that child was an older, you know, a mature man and a well-fixed man. Uh, apparently he took that baby from her but assured her that he'd make proper arrangements for the child to have a good life. So I don't know whether he adopted it out or what he did or how he did, and I don't even know that she ever said who it was. But it wasn't certainly anything I wanted to know because there's a... In that last video, I let a name slip and I didn't intend to. I'm better off not knowing all that stuff. Well, you know, I thought about it a little bit, and we, we talked to her three times. And I said, you know, the thing is that you carry yourself 
you dress yourself, you behave yourself in such a way that in no way have I seen anything about you that called my attention to you as a troubled child or as a girl that might be a bad influence. I said, you, you, you've been doing a good job. And I look at kids pretty close. So, you know, give yourself a break. You're doing a great job. And these teachers that have asked me to talk to you, they love you and care for you. you you've got a lot going personally, and you've got a lot of silent support around here. You know, I won't say that my talking to her had anything to do with anything. And, you know, this was way before I was working on a doctorate degree out of Greeley and took that guidance and counseling course, or courses to so be qualified as a counselor. Bad things happen to good people. I'm not saying she was good when she got into trouble, got pregnant. I don't know anything about that. But I do know she was a good influence, not a bad influence. And that says a lot. When a young kid can go through a pregnancy, have a baby taken away from her, handle her depression, and set a good personal example for herself and for other girls that might be thinking about doing some things they shouldn't do either.